guys, how you doing? Uh, thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome back to Colo Craft, the learning bushcraft channel with me, Colo, as I spend time trying to improve my bushcraft skills through camping, hiking, uh, and spending some time outdoors. Um, today marks the start of a, a new series of videos that I intend to do using my Ray Amir's book, Out on the Land, to really start improving my bushcraft skills. As I said before in, in, uh, in a various other videos, I am relatively new to all of this stuff. Um, I know little bits and pieces, but, uh, but most of the time whenever I go out, it is very much kind of uh, just winging it uh, and making stuff up as I go along. So, uh, so in this series, my plan is to use my book to really kind of hone my skills and, and learn how to do things properly, I guess, from, um, from the master of all bushcraft, uh, Mr. Ray Mears. Um, so there's going to be a whole bunch of different things, um, including sort of real uh, proper ways to set up tarps. We're going to do one on knife skills and knife safety, sharpening knives, uh, axe work, fire lighting, um, tying knots, loads of different knots that I have no idea how to do and look very complicated from the, uh, from, the from just looking at the book to start with. Um, so yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun uh, and hopefully by the end of it my, uh, my knowledge base will have improved dramatically. Um, shut up, plane. Uh, but in this first one, um, I thought I would start right at the beginning um, with the, the start of the book, which is all about how to set up a tarp properly. Now, um, I'm going to do it a couple of different ways. I'm going to do a few um, setups that you can do between two trees. Uh, and also I'm going to do some stuff with uh, without trees at all. So there would be numerous occasions when you might be um, out and about uh, planning a camping uh, or hiking trip or whatever and you're staying overnight. Uh, and there are no trees around, so um, so I brought a couple of trekking poles with me, uh, and going to show you a couple of cool ways to uh, to set up a tarp if there are no trees around you as well. Um, so that being said, let's crack on. So what I brought with me today, so I've got the book itself, Ray Mears Out on the Land, uh, and what I thought I'd do is is show you um, a close up of what kind of the book says as we're going through it, and then I'll attempt to uh, attempt to recreate what it says in there um, physically uh, and obviously I'll zoom in so on my hands and stuff so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I'll probably make a fair few mistakes because uh, obviously learning from a book is not the same as learning from a person but uh, we'll persevere and we'll uh, we'll see if we can nail this stuff down. So I've got my book, uh, I've also got um, my tarp of course, uh, I've got some paracord, I've got some extra paracord and pegs and stuff in there because as I said I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of doing it and I've got my trekking poles as well. Okay, so let's have a look. So what's really great about this book is there's a, there's a whole introduction to it, but then there's, um, which is really helpful for me at least anyway, there's uh, basic forest skills, which uh, is what is gonna form the basis of this, um, this series that I'm talking about. Here we go, basic forest skills. And one of the first things it talks about in here is, uh, is setting up tarps and the importance of being able to, to do it quickly. Uh, and simply, uh, particularly, um, obviously if it's raining or if it's really cold and you want to get your shelter up really really, uh, really rapidly, uh, this is a really good way of doing it. So uh, so the system that they're going to use, the first one, one that we're going to try and work out, um, is called the Event Hitch. Event Hitch, Event Hitch, I'm not sure. Uh, it apparently comes from um, reindeer herders in Siberia. And as you can imagine, in, in Siberia, um, in really, really cold weather, um, like having a knot that's too fiddly is going to be really really tricky to, to do fast and efficiently so so this is the way that they do it which um, which we're going to try and work out now so um, perfect what I'll do is, is I'll show you the first knot so that there's two different knots um, for each tree that you're going to use um, so I'll give you a quick close-up of the book so you can see kind of what it says and then uh, as I say we'll try and uh, we'll try and try and figure out how to actually do it okay so <clears throat> Okay, so here we are. So this is the first part of the first knot, which doesn't actually look all that complicated, I don't think. So it seems to go, wrap it round your hand, twist your hand over, pull the thread through, and then pull it tight against the tree. All right, uh, let's see if we can figure it out. So we're gonna use this tree here and this tree here to put our line up uh, in between. Um, once we've kind of got the hang of uh, this event hitch knot um, that's, in the, that's in the book, um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll have the tarp up, we'll use some, um, some plastic knots and see if there's a few different ways that we can sort of position the tarp. 
uh, to see various different ways of, of, of providing cover, uh, particularly if it's raining, you know, best ways to get the water to flow off and that kind of thing. And the book doesn't actually have too much information about that, it just has uh, the main line. Um, but obviously, as I said before, I do know a little bit about this stuff, so, uh, so we'll have a play around. Um, we'll move the tarp around and we'll see if we can do stuff a bit higher up, a bit lower down, uh, and see what that does in terms of cover. Okay, so I've got my tree, and as you can see, I've put the book down at the base of it so that I can uh, refer back to it if I need to. So let's have a go. First attempt. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to attempt to see if I can tie it, and then what I'll do is um, I'll zoom in a bit on my hands um, if, I, uh, if and when I get the hang of it to, uh, to show you guys a bit more closely. Okay, so... Attach a line in... Take a turn around your fingers, maintaining a gentle pull to prevent the line from slipping out of your fingers. Okay, so based on the picture it goes this way round. And round my fingers like that. Okay, gentle pull, maintaining tension. Rotate your left hand under the main line without allowing the cord wrapped around your fingers to slip off. Okay, that seems fairly simple. Pinch the cord end between your index and, multi and middle fingers and then withdraw your fingers from the wrapped loop. Okay, so I think that then goes there, and then I just pull the whole thing out. Is that right? And this way you should pull a loop of cord through the end as shown. Pull the loop snug and secure. Okay, so I don't have a loop, so I've done that wrong. Okay, no worries. Let's try again. Okay, so round the tree. A little bit of tension, that goes under there. Rotate that, but then we'll want a, a loop. There we go, okay, got a loop. Pull the loop snug and secure, yep, fine. Tighten the formed knot against the tree. This is a secure beginning, which can easily be released by pulling on the cord end. So if I do that against the tree. Oh, cool. Nice. That stays in place, and then if I pull this, hey, whole thing comes out. Nice, brilliant. Okay, so I think I figured it out. So let me um, move the camera and we'll zoom in um, so you can actually see what's happening. Okay, so hoping that my hand is in the frame and you can see this properly. Okay, so cord goes around the tree, so the end of it, if you like, is in my right hand. I then make a sort of a shelfy parcel thing with my left hand, then the loose end goes around my fingers to form a little loopy thing there. A little bit of tension so I don't lose it, and then I rotate my left hand like that, just round. This end that I've currently got hold of with my right hand then goes, I pinch that with my left hand, pull that through, and then secure this knot so that it forms a loop which I now have, quite a big loop, but never mind, and then secure it against the tree. And if I yank on that, that doesn't appear to be going anywhere. And then, easy release, pull this. Hey, look at that. Okay, first knot seems to be nailed down and is pretty much the same, if I can get that in focus, which I don't seem to be able to, which is very upsetting. Uh, just trust me, it looks, uh, looks just like the book, so yay me. Okay, let's uh, move on to the second part, which from an initial look at the book looks a little bit more complicated. Okay, so this is for the second tree and is tensioning the tarp line, which does look a bit more complicated, but so we make some kind of loopy thing can you guys see that? A loopy thing. Then it goes around the tree and back through the loop in order to put tension on it, I think. And then there's something else there about how to tie the rest of it off, which again looks a little bit complicated, but that's what the knot should look like at the end apparently. And then the tarp line itself should be nice and taut. So, uh, we'll take it step by step, um, let's see if we can work it out. Okay, so according to the book we need to form a slip loop. So, taking your paracord, 
you push your hands together, I think, to form a little loopy thing there, so it crosses over. So if you look what I'm doing, so I'm my right hand here, I'm going behind the cord, so it kind of crosses over there. Hopefully you can see that, so it crosses over. Uh, and then the second part of it is to form a small loop with your right hand like that, so that the so that the cord isn't crossing over; it's just pinched. And then that bit, your pinched bit, goes through the first loop you made and should form something like that. Now if you pull this, it will just all come apart. That's just shown, which we don't want to do, I believe, for this. So let's just create that again and leave the loop in. Okay, I think that's stage one done. Let's see what else the book says now. Okay, so we've got my loop. Hopefully you can see that. So now, this end, that currently isn't attached to anything, uh, we go around the tree and come back through the loop. So, uh, if this goes, oh, can I reach? Yes, I can. So that goes around the tree and then through the loop, back towards me, and then I should, apparently, be able to pull this and it tensions it. Wow, look at that! Boom! Ping! Ping! Love it. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll get a bit closer and I'll show you that again. Is this in shot. So, here's the loop. Cord goes round the tree. free end back through this loop or drop it whichever back through this loop like that and then this pull this up a bit and then this you can yank on this end to create some really nice tension just make sure that it's at the same level would help boom okay Nice and taut. Wow, really taut. That's so much better than the system I was using. Brilliant. Wow, okay. Uh, question is, now what? Okay, so we've got plenty of tension from doing the last bit of the knot. Okay, now what do we do? Okay, so uh, maintaining the tension, take the end of the cord back around the tree. Okay, I've done that, so so you can see that's the main loop, so the cord's gone through. Let's tension it up all the way back around the tree. Pull it nice and tight, okay, so that's good. That's nice and taut, okay. Wrap the end of the cord around the main line, gaining a little more tension. Okay, so this I think is the main line, and in the, according to the picture that you can't see, um, this bit's kind of pinched together. So I'm gonna hazard a guess that this comes sort of like this and down to pinch that together, or does it go the other way? Is it more likely to come? I think it actually probably goes round like that. No, that doesn't look right. Maybe it's under and pinches it together like that. Okay, done that. To tie off, pass a loop around and under the last wrap. Okay, so that would be the last wrap, so a loop under and around that. Maintaining the tension by preventing any slippage at this point. Uh, pass a second loop through the first and pull it tight. Okay, so I've got still got hold of that loop, so if I create another loop with this bit of the cord, pop it through there, and then pull that tight. Is that it? Did I do it? I don't know, that seems really, that seems a bit flimsy, but it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Okay, <laughs> that's really cool. The completed knot should look like this. Hang on, why don't I show you that, see if I can get it in focus, which I doubt, but we'll try. Oi. 
Can you see that? Not should look like that. And ours, well, apart from the sun, looks pretty similar. Ping. Nice and tight. Okay. Brilliant. Smashed it. What I might try and do is I'll try and tie it again lower down um, so the camera angle's kind of pointing over the top of it so you might be able to see a bit better. Let's. Plus I get to practice it again, so let's see if I can do it twice. So we're back to, to this section. So this end goes through that loop. We tighten it all up, gain some real good tension. So this loop goes back round the tree. And then this comes under the main line. Is that right? Looks like it comes under the main line pinches it together to create some more tension. Okay, done that. To tie off, pass a loop around and under the last wrap. So maybe then actually what that means is this loop comes around there and perhaps under that bit. Is that what is that supposed to mean? Seems a bit fiddly, but never mind. Okay, so I've done that. And then maintaining the pressure, form another loop through that loop and pull it tight. <sighs> Boom! Does that seem right? And then in theory it can be easy release by pulling on its free end when it's time to break camp. Well, let's find out. Ping, ping, ping! Just like that. Rock and roll. So now that we've run through how to do the event hitch sort of step by step uh, and learning, uh, I didn't actually put a tarp on it, you might have noticed. So, uh, so let's do it again. This time I'll do it all the way through and I'll actually put a tarp um, on the line as well to see how it holds up. Um, so yeah, let's do that. I've been mud. So I'm going to do this one a bit higher up so that I can actually sort of sit under the tarp perhaps. So let's see what the elevation does to you uh, working out this knot. Ah, nailed that bit. That side of it's easy, it's this fiddly, loopy thing that we may slip up on. So as always, I've got my uh, 3x3 DD tarp. I'm going to use the middle loop to put my tarp line through. attach a couple of prasic knots to my main tarp line to um, to get the other ends of it up so these are really easy to put on you just loop through there like that and then you can see you've got a little basically a loop that moves 
up and down your tarp line so you can tension it and uh, basically put your setup however you want. So I'm going to put two of these on. So in order to make the prasic works, not uh, the prasic not work, but there, we need a couple of sticks. So these will do. Snap those in half. Once your initial uh, tarp lines up, there's various different uh, ways that you can set up the tarp itself. Uh, the, easy of which, the easiest of which is the one that I've done here, which is a really simple sort of A-frame uh, setup done by simply pegging out all four corners of the tarp itself. Uh, good protection from, uh, from wind uh, and, and rain as well. And the really nice thing about this one is that uh, if you wanted to, uh, particularly during the day and you wanted you had a nice view uh, and you want to look at it a bit more you can actually open up one of these sides by uh, obviously unpegging it from the ground and attaching the guy ropes to uh, to a nearby tree so you get a bit more of a, a sort of an elevated elevated sort of flap so you can see much further uh, and then when it gets uh, windy or rainy in the evening you can, uh, you can pull these down to give yourselves a bit more protection uh, if you wanted to uh, you could actually lower the uh, lower the rope and go all the way to the ground if you were actually sleeping uh, on the ground this one works a little bit better for uh, for a hammock setup obviously because you'd be suspended between the two trees um, so this works really well um, I've used it a few times um, but if it's really raining I think there's a there's a slightly better configuration which is more of a diamond shape um, because then the bits at the side come to a point so the rain only has kind of two options to run off rather than uh, rather than the whole side like it does here um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpeg these, switch it around, and I'll uh, I'll show you very quickly how to do how to do that one just in case you're ever out and it's raining. Okay, so to set your tarp up like a diamond, rather than um, attaching these end loops to the to the plastic knots like it is now on the rectangle, what we're actually going to do is undo these, and we're going to use the corners instead. So I'm going to take this stick out. Let that go. That guy. So. so we're taking the corner loop, putting that through the plastic knot, and popping the stick in, just like that, tighten that up a bit. And on the other side you want the opposite corner. Now, regrettably, my trees are too close together, as you can see, so unfortunately this isn't going to be as tight as it should be, but you get the basic idea. So you do the opposite corners, and then these come out like so. so I'll still peg it down just to give you the basic idea. could just do, thinking about it, is move this knot to this tree over here, which is much further away, and see if we get a better, see if we get a better space. So give me two seconds, I'll set that up and I'll uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? So as you can see, I've now got my tarp set up between two trees which are much further apart. Uh, I use exactly the same system, the Event. Evenk, Evenk 
Siberian, Siberian reindeer herders tarp line, uh, which was actually really quick. Uh, I think you've been getting better at it already, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is rearrange this. As you can see, I set it up like I did normally for the A-frame. Uh, now we're going to change this to the diamond setup. So the first thing to do is release this prasic nut by taking the stick out and letting the loop of the tarp come out. And then, as I said last time, we're going to take the corner and attach it to this prasic knot. So what we do is we take this loop here, we pass that through the prasic knot, and then the stick just goes through the loop of the tarp. That's all tensions against that, and then we can slide the prasic knot along to tighten it up. Uh, what I'll do is, is I'll show you uh, a little bit closer up on, uh, on the other side, on this side. Uh, I'll do a little bit closer up what I mean by prasic knot. Uh, I'll just very quickly show you how to attach it and, um, and how to use them. So, Okay, I'm really struggling to get the prasic knot in focus, so I'm sorry about that. But essentially all it is, is it's a little extra little bit of paracord. So if you see, I take this stick out here. Come on, stick. It says confidently, come on. Boom, there we go. So the tarp falls away, and we're just left with this tiny little hank of paracord uh, that's attached to the main line. Um, all it actually is, as you can see, is a little circle of paracord held together with a random knot that is uh, just attaches to the main line itself. So the way that you do that is to come underneath like that. And ideally you do it twice, but it's difficult to do with one hand. So I'm gonna put the camera down, put it back on, and then I'll just show you how to uh, attach the top to the, to the prasic knot. Okay, I'm going to try and do this one-handed, which may be very, very tricky. So a plastic knot is attached there. Then we're taking the loop on the on the uh, tarp, and that actually goes through the middle of the plastic knot. Can you see that? Just about. Sorry, this is really shaky, right? So you ah. Try again. Loop of the tarp through the middle of the prasic knot. This is way easier if you use both hands. Pull that out and then what happens is, see this little stick I've got here? That then goes through the loop on the top. So I'm gonna put the camera down for two seconds and I'll come back and show you. Okay, sorry about that. So you can see now the loop of the tarp has gone through the loop of the plastic knot and I've just put a stick in there to tension it up. And then what you can do is slide the plastic knot along your tarp line, which in turn tightens out the tarp. Okay. So, what I'm gonna do now is pull out the rest of the tarp to form the diamond. So there you have it, tarp in a diamond formation, which as I say is really good for when it's raining because the rain all runs down the two sides to the points and off the uh, off the pulley ropes, uh, guy lines, whatever you want to call them, um, rather than uh, having the entire sheet, which is uh, which winds with the A-frame. Um, of course, you get less cover from the wind this way, um, so it's kind of entirely up to you which way around you do it. Both setups really good. Both really like uh, both really like them. I like really like both of them. Uh, they both have their place. Okay, cool. That was fun. <clears throat> So the other part of this video is to show you guys, or share with share with you guys, how to uh, how you can not the only way to do it, how you can set up a tarp if you don't have any trees around you. Um, so for the time being, just forget you can see all of these trees. Okay, they're not there. Just pretend. Just pretend. So with me, as you can see, I have bought two trekking poles. Now I'm only going to do two setups because otherwise this video is going to go on until the end of time. Uh, so I'm going to do a really simple A-frame that's close to the ground really good in bad weather and I'm also going to show you um, how to create a tent out of a three by three uh, three meter by three meter tarp uh, again using these trekking poles uh, so for the first one really simple a-frame uh, so what we want to do is we want two different uh, lengths of stick basically we're going to have a shorter one at this end where the uh, the back of the shelter will be and then a taller one at the front where the door frame will be so really simply uh, in order to keep it, because as I say, sometimes this is for kind of bad weather. So for the first one that we're going to do for the door, basically, wait, don't do it too much. Oh, now he's broken it. There we go. It's 
stop when it says stop. You kind of want it just to above your hip, so I'm going to extend that a little bit more because I'm quite tall. So just sort of there, we're going to say that's sort of the door. And then the back. to my knees kind of here, so I'm going to do it just above my knee, sort of to where my thigh is, sort of halfway through this pocket here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one at the back. Uh, I'm going to use the point to go through the loop at the back, so I'm going to put that there, and I'm just going to let it fall, and I'm going to put this one at the front. Right, okay, so this is the back of the tarp, so I've got the smaller, uh, smaller trekking pole here. Uh, you can also see, hopefully, that I've got a piece of paracord. This is what I'm going to use as the, uh, the tarp line, and it's running through all of the loops that are on the top of my DD tarp. So what we do is we take the trekking pole, we put the handle part on the floor, and put the spiky bit through the loop on the trekking pole. What I then do is angle this slightly so it's coming, so it's falling this way, basically so that when I lift the other end of the tarp, this will take the tension. I'm then going to wrap a little bit of paracord around the trekking pole. And I'm just going to peg it off really gently for now in this bit of earth here. Again, I'm not going to do this up right now because I'm going to tie them up later. This is just to take the main bit of the tension so that when I lift the other side, the whole thing doesn't collapse. Okay, so then on this side, we do effectively the same thing. So we pull this up, that then goes on there bit of paracord going round it and then we tension that out. Now I appear to have forgotten to bring a peg but that's okay we'll just use a stick and as you can see the other side has actually fallen over anyway so just drive that in there and then what I'll do is I'll go and tension up the other side again to pull it all back together. does work, I swear. And there you have it. So as I say, really, really simple. Um, the key to it really is uh, once you put up the back pole uh, and you peg out the, uh, the two back corners first, it's probably the easiest way to do it. As you're moving forward, the best thing to do is take hold of your uh, guy line here, your, um, your tarp line, and keep the tension in it as you move towards the front in order to stand this pole up. Makes your life so much easier. But from, uh, from there, once this is up, all you do is peg out the two front corners because the back ones will already be done. As you can see, nice simple shelter. There's loads and loads of room inside to uh, put all your kit. I mean, you could have two people sheltering under here. Um, what you'd always try and ensure that you do is face the sides into the wind um, so that the wind is, uh, so that you're protected from the wind because the wind's hitting the outside of the tarp rather than, of course, it going straight through the middle, in which case this wouldn't keep you all that warm. But uh, as I say, really simple tarp set up, um, trekking poles. Um, one piece of uh, cordage is all you need, and, uh, and uh, I've used six pegs, so I've put a peg in each side of this to keep this uh, taut on either side, and obviously one in the four corners. So uh, really, really simple, really, really quick to set up, nice and easy. Um, okay, now once I've done, now that we've done the A-frame, I'll show you um, as quickly as I can do how to do the uh, how to do the tent. Okay, guys, so for this setup to turn it into a tent, lie the tarp out flat as you can, like a, like I've done here. I've already put pegs in this loop here and that loop there and this loop here and that loop there. This is going to be the back of the tent. And the, uh, this section, of, of course, at the front here is going to be uh, the main part of it where we're going to put the door. Uh, so I need some pegs, which I've got in my pocket. I need my two poles. Uh, this actually is really, really simple. I'll do it nice and quick so you, uh, so you don't need to keep watching the video for hours and hours and hours. Um, I'll just show you how to do it very, very quickly. So I need my longer pole for this end and I need the over here. Okay, so in order to create the door, what we're going to do is, I've got a few pegs there, we're actually going to take this corner of the tarp, pop a peg through the loop, and we're actually going to move this, fold it inside, and peg it out actually about here, where that second loop there is. So we're going to do that, pop that in there. And we're going to do the same on the other side with the other section of course, for the other bit of the door. So it's going to go in about there. Perfect, he says. Now, here comes the magic. What we do is we get our trekking pole, 
and this time we're going to put the handle against the bottom of the against the tarp and we're going to put the spike into the earth. What we're going to do is put the handle underneath this loop here, like that, and then push up to form our door. The reason that it's good to use the loop is because it's reinforced. So we're going to do that. What I'm now going to do is, if you can see, I'm going to extend the pole a little bit to, uh, to make the door a bit bigger and to put a bit more tension in the, uh, in the tent itself. So hopefully that should now stay. What I'm going to do now is get a, a rope, once I've just readjusted this back onto there because it does tend to slip. There you go. I'm going to pull this forward to get a bit of tension and then what I'm also going to do is pin these two back like this so we've got a nice door. I'll do that now. So once you've attached your guy rope to the main part of the uh, to the front main part of the front door and pin back the uh, the folds using the, uh, a couple more guy ropes pin it to the uh, actually hook it to the loops that are part of the DDE tarp there you go tarp tent really easy to set up um, what I've actually done with the second pole is uh, I've made it a lot smaller similar to we did with the A-frame and I've actually put it at the back uh, of the tarp pushing up the uh, the back of it so that you get a lot more space inside so now there's loads of room in there you can easily fit two people or, uh, or loads and loads of gear. So uh, really simple setup, nice and quick, uh, and lots of fun. Well, uh, I think that's it from me today, guys. Um, thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did enjoy it and you're new here, please, uh, please do hit that subscribe button and share it with somebody else that you think might like this stuff. Um, as I said before, this is just the start of my uh, basic forest skills learning through my uh, Ray Mears Bushcraft book. So uh, I'm actually going to make a playlist and, and have all of them kind of in, uh, in one place where it's easier to find them. So uh, next one I think will, be, uh, will probably be using my knife, possibly. We shall see. I think that's next in the book. So I'll probably do some knife safety, knife skills, how to use them properly uh, and how to sharpen it. So uh, thank you very much, guys, and I uh, will uh, see you in the next one. Peace out. This setup is really cool. Loads of space in there. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Oh, seriously? Go away, helicopter. Stop looking at me.